Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be giving myself an unfair advantage using computer vision once again. Now, in my previous video, I attempted to use YOLO object detection to uh, give myself a name bot for Counter Strike and Fortnite, which on paper and in a practice game it worked out pretty well, but in actual matches it went miserably. In this video, I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be giving myself an aimbot for the game of Phantom Forces found on Roblox. And in order to do that, I'll be using an in-game feature known as the Ballistic Tracker, which basically gives out the location of the enemy by placing a fucking rhombus on top of where their head is. So I'll be just detecting where the rhombus is and then like move my mouse on it. First, my first approach to do it was to use the Pi Auto GI locate on screen functions, because there's a few variations of, of them, to actually retrieve the location of, uh, of the rhombus from the screenshotted area of my screen. Because yes, I'll be using the same method of capturing the game as in the previous video, I'll be taking continuous screenshots using the MSS library. Returning back to the locate, Pi Auto GI locate on screen function, it led me to conclude that it was really slow and inefficient. So then it made me on and go and do some research to find something more efficient. By research I mean opening a good old chat GPT and asking, is there something faster than Pi Auto GUI locate on screen function? And the motherfucker said yes. And he said that I can use OpenCV template matching. Then I went onto the OpenCV website and I just read this whole article over here which is really useful since it clearly explains how you can use it yourself. Basically, template matching in OpenCV detects an image, template image on a larger image. Yeah, that's really it. And then from then you can retrieve the coordinates of that detected image uh, and also the confidence of it. And it doesn't really efficiently. So then I went on and used that. And this was the result. An 80 line, less than 80 line if you don't account the fucking 20 lines of comments, aimbot that works for Phantom Forces. Of course I'll be showing it, I'll be showing its performance in the actual game. But let's actually talk a little bit of how you can use this yourself. First of all you need to install the required libraries of here, I'm gonna put them on GitHub. You need to then set your, uh, your Roblox sensitivity here, Phantom Forces mouse sensitivity, and then Phantom Forces aim sensitivity here. In my previous video of the full external no uh, recall hack for CS2, I talked about how certain games such as CS2 uh, have their sensitivities, their in-game sensitivities, act as a multiplier upon the actual mouse sensitivity. Roblox kind of does the same thing, but just so you know, uh, but um, it's quite different. Its ratio is not the same as Counter-Strike's because Counter-Strike has a one-to-one -one ratio uh, of, uh, of the mu multiplier effect. Roblox, on the other hand, uh, works quite differently. Z if you set 0 .5, 0 0.55 Roblox sensitivity is the equivalent of your native mouse movement sensitivity. So you need to normalize it using that. The Phantom Forces mouse sensitivity as, acts as a multiplier upon Roblox's sensitivity and the Phantom Forces aim sensitivity acts upon mal, uh, Phantom Forces mouse sensitivity. And since this program will only work when you hold down your aim sights, because that's how you activate uh, the ballistic tracker thing, uh, then you can just directly calculate the value that acts as a multiplier up upon Roblox sensitivity by multiplying these two Phantom Forces uh, sensitivity. I've been saying sensitivity for a fucking lot and it's pissing me off. Let's move on. Movement compensation. Movement compensation. So Phantom Forces is a really you know, fast-paced game. You can fucking jump three times or some shit and people move around like uh, crazy motherfuckers. So uh, it will be quite hard for the program to track exactly where the player is at all times. Since it, can, it, since it cannot take screenshots as the same speed of how the program runs. There will always be a kind of latency there, a delay. In order to compensate for that, we can uh, make our movements larger than what they are technically required, so that you can, in theory, always stay on the enemy, since you're always over-aiming to it, if you quite understand what the fuck I'm saying. Probably you don't, you just don't really care, but it doesn't fucking matter. 
final computer sensitivity multiplier, which calculates finally the fucking uh, multiplier that acts on, on your computer sensitivity. Yeah, it's the robot sensitivity times phantom force sensitivity. If I say sensitivity on one more fucking time, I'm gonna blow up. You divide it by 0 0.55 because 0 0.55 is equal to 1x mouse sensitivity, and then you plus movement compensation. All right. You enter inside the while loop, you sleep one millisecond so that your CPU usage isn't that crazy. Actually, it wouldn't really affect it if I remove this. It's just an old habit of mine. Uh, I get the game frame by using MSS over here, convert it to a NumPy array so that we can uh, use OpenCV on it, convert that whole image to black and white, gray basically. The reason why we do that is because it's much faster to use a gray image than a colored image to run detections on it also is quite more s simpler to do it this way. I check if I'm pressing uh, like this mouse key, I'm just gonna show it uh, as a fucking picture on Adobe Premiere or some shit. If you press it, if you hold it technically, um, you're, it's going to beep a little bit so that you know when the program exits. So look, just fucking check it out yourself. Beep. Yeah. Great. And then you break and the uh, program says bye bye and fucks off. Uh, next, it checks if you're holding down the right mouse uh, key because that's how you fucking aim in, isn't it? Then it runs um, CV2 uh, template matching. Also, I'll, I'll talk in a second how I get the template and how, uh, how I got the template. You get the values from the detection the minimum conf uh, the minimum uh, confidence value maximum confidence value minimum uh, location um, point technically le le left top point coordinates and max location so the ma uh, the uh, the location of the max confidence um, x y uh, point you check if the max value is equal max uh, confidence is equal or over 0 0.8. If so, then you extract the x coordinate uh, from the max uh, lock point and then the y coordinate. You add this to it. Why do you add this to it? Now, because this function over here is going to give you the top left corner of the detected image, which isn't really what we want because then we're technically going to be missing each time. It's not going to be hitting the uh, rhombus is going to be hitting the top left corner of the rhombus, which is quite inaccurate. So to get to the center, uh, I divide the width and height of the image. So then, then I can just basically, uh, so, uh, so that I can use that value as an offset to the X and Y. Then I calculate the difference between where my crosshair is, the center of the screen basically, and uh, the location of uh, where the detection is, and you multiply it by the sensitivity, the current sensitivity settings. You then run a mouse event call in which you move your mouse to uh, those coordinates and you click. And for the last thing of just finding and getting the template image itself, I just took a screenshot during the game, during one of my games, and cropped it. Now as you can see the rhombus is on top of the actual enemy's head, which is kind of most of the time how it's going to be. So I just kept it that way and it's also because I did not want to do any masking uh, slash removing the background or something like that because I'm really fucking lazy. I read the image, I convert it to gray as well and get the width and the height so that we can get the coordinates to the center of the rhombus and not top left corner. Boom! That's fucking really it. Yeah, no, it's pretty easy. So now to get an idea if this is good or not, I'll be using it in actual games and I'll be making a really shitty montage showcasing its performance with actual players. So let the clips roll. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody in the car, so come on, let's ride to the liquor store around the corner. The boys say they want some gin and juice, but I really don't wanna. Be a buzz like I had last week. I must stay deep, cause talk is cheap. I like
like Angela, Pamela, Sandra, and Rita. And as I continue, you know they're getting sweeter. So what can I do? I really bag you, my lord. To me, flirting is just like a sport. Anything fly, it's all good. Let me jump in, please send in the trumpet. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. A little bit of Tina's what I see. A little bit of Sandra in the sun A little bit of Mary all night long A little bit of Jessica, here I am A little bit of you makes me your man <laughs> Mumbo number five Jump up and down and move it all around. Shake your hand to the sound. Put your hands on the ground. Take one step left and one step right. One to the front and one to the side. Clap your hands once and clap your hands twice. And if it looks like this, then you're doing it. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. A little bit of Tina's what I see. A little bit of Sandra in the sun. A little bit of Mary all night long. A little bit of Jessica, here I am. A little bit of you makes me your man. As you saw from the clips, the performance of this uh, quote-unquote cheat is pretty good actually. It was actually really fun recording uh, all those clips there and uh, actually editing it. As always, I'll be leaving down the link to the source code of this uh, project on uh, my GitHub in, in the description. And other than that, there's nothing else to say. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good one. See ya.